All right, so we're back and looking at our column of particles, kind of where we left off before, but I've made some changes. And the first change I made is instead of using the default shader, I have my own shader that I've made. And I'll go over kind of what that looks like. And it's pretty similar to that default shader we made um, before. So first we have our lerp, we have our linear interpretation between two colors that we have and a color ramp control. And we have um, a texture, which we're using a default particle. And then if you've watched some of my other shader videos, uh, we have just the basic uh, simple noise and a combination of two noises kind of crossing each other to get a more random noise. Um, I have a item called speed because as that uh, noise moves, it actually affects the look of the fade out and makes it look like it's moving. So I have that speed that you'll see kind of how that affects the look of our column. And then I am going to subtract this dissolve power. So the higher the dissolve power, the faster it's going to subtract off of that. Remember the noise is between zero and one. So as we subtract off an amount um, every time over time, it's going to fade faster or slower. Then I'm going to multiply that. So I'm gonna use two different items. One, I'm gonna feed into the alpha and I have to feed the white one into the alpha. So I'm going to multiply by my white particle and feed it into the alpha and then multiply it by my colored and feed it into the base color uh, that's coming from our that's coming <clears throat> from our texture. And because if we use the colored one for the alpha, it's going to be dimmer because of course this is not uh, pure white or um, one. When it's um, yellow, it's a little less than one. So we always want to feed the white one into the alpha. All right, so we have our shader. Now I'm going to flip over to our rotating fire column. And you'll notice just like before that I showed, as soon as we switch to that um, shader, we uh, saw our exposed variables. And so I have also exposed out of this uh, VFX graph fade speed. I've set a um, size over lifetime. So it's going to start out small. You'll see they start out small and get bigger. And I have just a ramp for that. And then I have this multiply size. So this lets me change how um, it'll take that size over lifetime and multiply it. So it'll get even bigger um, over lifetime as I do that multiply size. We have our uh, two curves, of course, that kind of what we showed before as far as uh, feeding into our color ramp. And one is feeding into this dissolve power. So the dissolve power will go up as it goes higher. So it'll fade out as it reaches the top of our column. Kind of what that's doing. The other stuff is the same as we did before. I did expose this up speed. So instead of a um, fixed speed for up, I can actually vary that as we're looking at our column. And you'll see what happens when we start playing around with these values uh, to see the different look of our column. Here I have a rate. So how many uh, particles per second is going to be able to be controlled. Uh, and then I have my rotation speed. So remember that cross product, we're multiplying it by um, this rotation speed to um, make it spin faster or slower. So those are all the variables that I'm exposing. And you can see we have our basic column here. And if I select our rotation file over there, I can see our exposed variables here. So the next thing I'm going to do is instead of using a default particle, I am going to come over here. Let's scroll over to where 
our shader is. And instead of using a default particle, I've made this flame. And so what I did is I don't have great artistic ability. And so I just searched um, Google Images for uh, flame, you know, a couple different keywords. And then I basically grab some of the flame and I modified it from there. It's 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 a very helpful to get a starting point uh, in order to make a flame versus getting all those different um, shaders on there. So now we can see we have our nice flame, but it really doesn't look like a fire because all the flames are exactly the same. And in a fire, you'd really have to mix them, which is quite difficult. I do have some ideas, but in this case, they're all the same because particles are always the same. There are ways of making um, different particles that I'll show in, a, in another video um, coming up. But for now, we have the single flame uh, going up. And this is the other thing I'll point out is that angle, that rotation. See this Z it has to be 90 because if it was zero, See, then they're, they're facing sideways, and I don't want them sideways, I want them up. And this is why it's important to understand what all these angles are and why I kind of went through those other videos. So once you understand what these angles do, you can manipulate uh, them much easier to get the look you want <clears throat> in your VFX graph. So we have our column, we have our flames, I'm gonna select this and start playing with some of these values. So first of all, let's crank the rate rate up to like a thousand. So now we get a more interesting look here. It's at the bottom. It's still kind of spaced out, but here what they're what's happening is they're all blending together. And you'll notice that you get this undulating red and yellow because remember, um, I have this lifetime is going is anywhere between one second and six seconds. And so the ones that are going shorter are going to, uh, they're gonna change that color ramp a lot faster. Remember the color ramp's going from yellow to red and the ones that are uh, just a second long are changing from that red somewhere in this region. Two seconds are gonna be somewhere here. And of course, oops, <clears throat> near the top, they're pretty much all red because the only ones that are left are the ones that um, were for six seconds. So we can see our nice fade out at the top for our flame and that is affected by that uh, fade speed, which is I have at 0.1. Let's see if I change it to one. See how it actually changes because as that noise moves, it creates this effect, which maybe I like that, maybe I don't. I, I think it's kind of annoying. Um, if I do zero, then we just get a little, uh, not as much, uh, nice looking top. So then this is why having exposed variables and being able to see it, you really don't know how everything is going to interact until you start playing around with these values. And I can watch uh, and play with these values until I get the look I want at the top of my column. <clears throat> so if we crank up our rotation speed, let's try five we can see we get a much nicer uh, spinning column look, but you will notice that it's getting wider at the top. And as I crank my rotation speed up, it actually gets keeps getting wider. And it took me a while to figure out, I was trying to figure out why that happened. And at first I thought maybe um, there's a mass and they're computing something on a physics engine that it's, you know, as it's spinning, it gets some angular momentum. But I played around with the mass that that wasn't it. And what I'm thinking is that when we look at what what we're doing is we're updating the changing the direction of the velocity really by that cross product. And this update particle is called some number of times per second. I don't know what it is. 
um, but I know it's not infinite. And so the faster we spin, it's moving in a direction um, and it's covering some distance, right, in that, in that perpendicular direction and before it gets updated. And so the faster we spin, the further it's going to travel before it can change direction and then it will space out. So um, there are things we can do to fix that. And what I'm going to be doing next, now that we have a nice column, so let's slow this down a bit. All right, we have a nice column of fire going. And we can play around with the, with the diameter of the bottom um, if we want to make it wider or bigger just by, uh, let's scroll over here. If we select this, we can see that it will show us uh, the circumference, right? And so we can tighten this down to make a narrower column at the bottom. So it's a pretty good looking fire. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. You get a nice mix of that, of that yellow and red values there. But what I wanna do is, what I really want is like a fire tornado. I want this moving kind of left and right, right? A tornado, you think it starts out um, small, it kind of flares out as it gets uh, near the top but it kind of weaves back and forth. So how are we gonna get a weave back and forth into our, into our column? So I'm gonna work on that next and I'm gonna add some things to this and let's see if we can get um, first a flare and then get kind of an undulating uh, movement back and forth. So we'll work on that next. All right, so I've added um, some changes to our VFX graph to get this nice curve onto our fire column, which is what we wanted to try to do. And I'll kind of go over that, what I did. So first thing I had to do is I had to change this set lifetime and I had to make these even because what was happening is the shorter lifetimes were following my flare out faster because they move um, over the lifetime of the particle. And so you'll see if I change this to one, what happens is all these shorter ones see are like shooting out and they're not blending together. And so that's not good. It's not gonna look good. So I had to change that. I also um, upped the amount that you'll see in a minute. But first, let's see what I did um, in order to get it to move out. So what I did is I added, I took our normalized vector. And if you think of it, what our normalized vector is, is it's the direction from the center of our torus out to the position of our particle. And what I want to do is I want to move the particle in that direction, which will move it further away from the center of the torus. And I wanna control how much it's moved. So what I did is I created a sample curve. You'll remember we made one of those for our uh, color ramps and it is gonna look like this. The shape of this curve is gonna affect the shape of our um, kind of, of our cone. And then I'm gonna multiply it by some number and you'll see why, and it's very important that we expose this because what this number needs to be in order to get the look, it's pretty hard to say, and you'll see why. So I multiply by this, uh, <clears throat> by this amount, and then I'm gonna multiply that by our normalized vector. So this is gonna kind of set the length of that vector, or how much it's gonna move out from the center. And then I'm just gonna take the X and Y because I don't want to touch the Z. Um, the, remember the Z is the up direction. So this is just going to be the out direction. And I'm going to add it to the position every time we update the particle. And this is why it's important to modify that value because every single time it updates the particle, it's going to add to its position. And I can't set its position because remember the velocity is, is setting its position by making it spin around and move up. And so what I'm 
going to do is I want to add to that position by this amount. And again, remember, I don't know how many times this, this gets hit per second. Is it 10 times a second? Is it 100? Is it 1,000? I really don't know. And it could vary depending on your graphics card or the speed of your system. And so you may have to tune that um, a bit. And you'll notice it's still a little raggedy at the edges here because technically I really should... I really should set this angle to be perpendicular, right? This is the line that it should be rotated, but it's standing straight up and down. And that's probably possible to figure that out um, more than I want to get into right now. Um, and it's not really that necessary. It doesn't look, it's not too bad. So we'll leave that for now. And we see we get our nice little curve here. And if I select this, you'll see that this flare amount is pretty small. It's 0.02. If I made this like one, you'll see it gets crazy big very fast. So it definitely needs to be small. Um, you know, if I try 0.1, it still gets really, you know, 0.01. You know, I might want it a bit bigger. So I picked 0.2, gave me a nice, a nice looking curve, something that looks similar to a fire tornado. So we've got our kind of flare out at the top. So what we're gonna work on next is we want it to kind of undulate back and forth, right? Um, the spinning is nice and the flare is nice, but tornadoes that kind of classic look spins back and forth. So let's work on that next. So I've added in some changes to get what we're looking at right now, which is getting some um, right to left movement on our column to make it look a bit more like a tornado. Um, it was a bit of a challenge. It's not moving as uh, much at the bottom as I would like. And I don't know if it's because it's a really, really tight circle and the um, velocity is changing it very quickly. Um, if we wanted better control, we'd probably want to move all the positions um, ourselves. But, you know, for what it is, I think it works and it highlights kind of <clears throat> what we can do with some of these changes. So one thing I want to cover a little uh, in a little more detail is what I had to do with a custom uh, property. I haven't used one of those before. So you'll see here in my initialized particle, I have this set arc center, which is a custom property. And if I select it, we can see over here, set custom attribute. So when I added this, I just said set custom attribute. I just do one if we say set custom, you'll see set custom appears here. And when we make it, the attribute name, you have to come over here to the inspector and type in a name, whatever name you want, and you have to pick the type. So I picked a vector three and I named it um, arc center. And the reason I had to do that is when the particle moves left and right, so these particles are moving left and right, the center point that they're computing their direction vector also has to move because if you don't it'll like make the x-axis get all off and everything so the whole actual center point that all the vectors are being computed off of has to move along with the shifting of the particles and so I'll be using this um, in some of my other videos, but the setting a custom attribute allows us to modify each particle individually with their own attribute. So as each particular particle moves, its center point that it's being used for computation moves also. So let's make this a little bit smaller here. What I also did is I used that arc center custom attribute for my uh, direction vector here. Before I was grabbing this position, 
right? So instead of grabbing the position, I am now using my arc center. And the reason that still works is if we come way over here is I'm resetting that or modifying my arc center. First of all, I'm setting the arc center initially when I'm creating it right from the position of my arc torus right there. So it is matching the arc torus center by default. And then every time I'm moving it, I'm actually moving my arc center along with my position. So they're kind of moving together and that's important that they move together. And how I'm setting the move is I created another sample curve here. And if we look at that, you'll see it kind of goes one direction and then goes negative. So that would be to the um, left of the center point and then comes back. So you can make this curve anything you want. Um, obviously, whatever shape you want. Um, and then I'm multiplying it by this position change because again, we're using it to add this position. And remember that add position, it's very sensitive. And so we want to pick the right amount in order to get um, the look we want uh, as we select our um, column fire and modify those values. So I'm taking that sample curve, I'm multiplying it by a multiplication factor, and then I'm using that again to add that position. So in, it, in addition to the flare, it's also shifting it left and right. And so if we select, uh, select our column of fire here, let's give a little more room. We can see that the flare is 0 0.01. Also, the flare kind of fights that position change too because they're both modifying that position. And again, it's all kind of interacting together and it's always hard to say um, how the system is, is working when there's things that are kind of fighting each other. And then my position change, I made it 0 0.03. So it doesn't have to be very big. You know, if we do it 0.04, we can see it did it shifted a bit more, a little more multiplication factor. So that is really what I was looking for. It looks like kind of a fire tornado. And again, you can use different um, images for your for your fire image. If you want it to look like smoke, you could use um, a lighter one and give different fade patterns and maybe I'll do something on that in a later video um, and yeah and pick different colors and play around with it yourself and I've kind of showed the basics of how you can use particles and the nice thing about this this could be done with a mesh and you know picking some type of image that's Im um, mapped onto the mesh the thing about using shaders with meshes is that the single image is stretched across the entire mesh. So as your mesh gets bigger and smaller, um, the image, you only have one image. And if it gets too big, that image really gets stretched. Um, the other thing about our fire image is it's fairly small. So when we blow it up, you'll see it gets really fuzzy at the top. If I made a higher resolution image, um, it wouldn't look so fuzzy. I mean, it depends on the look you want. So selecting the image for your texture um, can really change the look of things. Obviously changing that color ramp, um, the number of particles all um, lends itself to that different look. So that's it for our three-part video on using that torus and rotation and ending in our nice fire tornado here. So I've been working on some other things for my next video. I'm um, using the circle and some interesting things with that. So I've got some ideas for that. So stay tuned. Um, I am on Christmas break, so I have some time on my hands. I'll probably be putting together another video uh, fairly soon. So I'll see you then.